So welcome everyone. And uh, tonight we have a special guest zooming in all the way from Portugal. And uh, Francisco Moreo Correa, I hope I'm saying that right, Francisco. Um, and he's speaking about the apparitions of Fatima and the UFO phenomenon, which is my favourite case. So just a bit about Francisco before we start. Francisco developed a keen interest in the possibility of intelligent life in other planets from a young age. And with dedication and persuasion, he studied the history of both Portuguese and international UFO cases. And over time, he was able to meet with most of the pioneer researchers in Portugal, developing a respectful relationship with them, which soon became genuine and lasting friendships. So feeling a sense of stagnation in the field of ufology and motivated by the activism of people like Stephen Greer and Stephen Bassett uh, and Paula, ha Paula Harris, uh, Francisco founded the Portuguese Exopolitics Initiative in 2009, which was later registered as a non-for-profit organisation. So Exopolitics Portugal works in coordination with the CTEC, which is the Centre for Transdisciplinary Studies of Consciousness, a research and think tank based at the University of Fernando Pessoa in Porto, Portugal. And the members of this research centre comprise many academics from universities across Portugal. So Francisco has given a lot of lectures at UFO conferences in the Czech Republic and in Denmark and Germany and San Marino and Spain and in the UK. He's been involved in several TV documentaries filmed in Portugal including UFO Europe and Planet UFO, both of which were the National Geographic Channel. Um, he also appears in Extraterrestre uh, seasons one, two, and three for the History Channel. And he's participated in numerous news segments of Portuguese TV as well as being a guest on many radio talk shows. Needless to say, Francisco has a lot of experience in this field. Francisco is also co-founded the Global Exopolitics Organization and is part of the advisory board of the Exopolitics Institute. And Francisco is co-founder and Europe's director of um, the International Coalition for Extraterrestrial Research. And that's how I actually got to know Francisco it, uh, through that. So, um, so welcome, Francisco. And uh, it's great to have you here. And thanks for coming along and talking about my favorite subject. <laughs> well, thank you, Cheryl, for having me. Uh, thank you all who are here on a Saturday night for you. And for me, it's early morning. <laughs> you see that the sunshine is, is showing up. So it's a little bit, um, there's too much uh, lighting. Um, yes, uh, I met Cheryl at the, uh, the uh, ICER, the International Coalition for Extraterrestrial Research. Um, this is an organization that was founded uh, back in May 2021, <clears throat> and um, uh, it was registered here in Portugal. It has 28 uh, representatives from 28 different countries. It is a big uh, challenge. Um, this, this new organ, it's a non-for-profit non uh, organization. Uh, an NGO, an international NGO with statutes, uh, with uh, no, uh, too much bureaucracy involved. But <laughs> <laughs> we aim, for, we have uh, big objectives for, for, for the near future. So today we'll be talking about uh, Fatima. And um, I believe that some of you may have heard about Fatima. So like Cheryl said, I'm the one of the uh, co-founders of the Exopolitics Portugal Initiative. Uh, we work together with CTEC, uh, Center for Transdisciplinary Studies of Consciousness at the University of Fernando Pessoa. Uh, this center um, is a think tank, a research department that comprises academics from different universities in, in Portugal. Okay? And one of the fields of research is UFOs, of course, uh, UFOs and, and consciousness, etc. So the Marian apparitions of 1917. Um, what people usually know about this, this uh, event was that three children, three shepherds, uh, Lucia, 10, Francisco, 9, and Jacinta, 7. Francisco and Jacinta were brothers. 
and they were cousins of Lucia. Right? They were um, guarding their family ship and uh, at noon, they witnessed the apparition of some called the Virgin Mary, which um, this, the Virgin asked them to return every, every 13th day of the month and to pray, basically to, to pray. <clears throat> On October 13th, 1917, about 50, well, there are different numbers uh, attributed from different uh, sources. Some say 50,000, others 60, 70, well, about 60, 50,000 people uh, were at the local place where <clears throat> the Virgin Mary usually showed up. They were expecting to see a big miracle. And uh, some said that the, 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 dan the sun had danced over their heads. Right? And some healing, some miracle healings were reported as well. Years later, uh, when Lucia wrote her memories, uh, she reported that the Virgin Mary had told her three secrets. Two of them were revealed in 1941. The third was written in 44 by request of the Bishop of Leiria, and they were re and this third was revealed in 2000. Uh, the three secrets were the vision of hell, the devotion to the heart uh, of the Virgin Mary and conversion of Russia, and the attempted murder of John, John Paul II. Right? This is the uh, mainstream uh, story. Some curiosity, uh, what is Fatima, the name Fatima, uh, this is, goes back to an Arab girl born in Portuguese territory that had fallen in love with a Portuguese knight. Uh, as a wedding gift, the king, our first king, Afonso Henriques, back in, in the, the 11th, uh, 12th century, offered them a piece of land with the village of Abdegas. Uh, Fatima, uh, the girl, was converted to Christianism and adopted the name Oriana, and later the village of Abdegas changed its name to Ourain in respect to Fatima. Covadeia, which is the place where uh, the, the apparitions took place, um, Iria was a Lusitan martyr. Lusitan, uh, the Iberian pen Peninsula is recognized as Lusitania, uh, Lusitania, the land of the light. Uh, Idea was a Lusitan martyr. She was a nun that was killed by a, nine, a knight in an act of envy. This is just curiosity. In 1976, Fina de Armada, uh, which you'll see uh, on the right, and Joaquin Fernandes on the left, uh, started the, to research the facts uh, about, the, about the operations, uh, reviewing documents, interviewing witnesses. Uh, they uh, both uh, wrote several books. Uh, one of them was, was translated in, into English and there's a, a trilogy of books, Celestial Secrets, Heaven and Lights, Fatima Revisited. Uh, this is the, uh, a scientific um, analysis of, of the, uh, the apparitions. Okay, so uh, starting with the, um, um, <clears throat> from the beginning, so this in, on, the, on February 7th, 1917, a group of mediums that used to gather in Lisbon, they received some, a sort of a message, uh, uh, an automatic, in automatic writing from, writing from the right to left, uh, something that is, can only be read on a mirror. And um, this, this message uh, was some, somehow encrypted. This is Carlos Calderon, uh, the, uh, one of the, uh, the psychics from that group. And uh, in, that, in that message, they realized that something extraordinary would happen uh, probably in May, 1917. So this happened in, in February. Uh, there was a message that was received and uh, indicated that something on the 13th of May would happen. You have also a, a small graphic. This is from a study, a Russian study, about influence of the, um, 
uh, sun activity, when the sun is more active, uh, there and one of the you, you see one of the uh, um, one of the spots is 1917, precisely 1917. And this this when the sun is more active, um, there's more uh, people are more um, uh, how do I say um, not ready but prepared to um, have their psychic abilities um, more more um, open uh, ready to, to to be used maybe if i can say that okay. uh, the uh, the psychics only although they had the uh, the, um, the message received on on february they only uh, published them uh, in in march one month later uh, so on the right you have the um, the minutes of that meeting and on the on the left you have the minutes of the meeting and on the on the right you have the uh, the, um, uh, the the message that was published in the the newspaper so you have 135917 which would be 13 of 13th of may 917 and basically it says uh, don't forget uh, a happy day that will and um, the martyr, uh, the war uh, will will terminate. Uh, they thought that the uh, the message that they were receiving uh, would mean that the the first world war was going to end on the thirteenth of May, nineteen seventeen. So they um, interpret the message as something related to war because they had fam uh, family relatives. Uh, in the war, so there was this hope that maybe one of the things that uh, Fina de Armada, uh, when she when both Fina and Joaquin, they wanted to understand, um, and they got in touch with some of the uh, the psychics that, that were still alive in in the seventies. Um, they asked them if if these psychics were uh, they usually published their their messages. Okay. Uh, if it was a, a, it was regular for them to publish their their messages, and they said no, they 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 just felt an impulse to uh, publish this specific message. Okay. Um, it's interesting also that uh, in in May on uh, on May tenth on May tenth um, there was another psychic. Uh, those the, the February psychics was were in Lisbon. This psychic was in in um, in Porto, <clears throat> and this psychic also received some kind of message that he paid. Well, not not um, he sent he sent this this message to several newspapers. Some of them were the most read in Portugal, and three of the the newspapers published his. His message. One of them, Journal Noticias, uh, published in the first page of the newspaper. Uh, also, um, they thought that something is what you can see here: um, war and spiritism, uh, sensational revelation. We received this uh, yesterday, <clears throat> so this was published on the on May eleventh. Although the message was was re received on May tenth. And so it was participated by the spirits uh, to several spiritual groups that on th the 13th of the current month, uh, there will be a huge fact in respect to the war that will impress, uh, that will, well, <clears throat> will heavily impress everyone. Okay? So uh, they, again, this was an impactful message that people related to the war. And there was a specific date, 13th of May. Okay. Um, you have also here in the in, below an important journalist, an architect. Uh, he was also an anti church activist. Um, he emphasized that it would be something extremely important with great consequences for the entire world. But again, they thought it had relation to the war. Also, uh, on May 10th, uh, in the north of Portugal, Bajal, a young kid at 8 a.m. 
de Severino Alves, he was 10, he heard a thunder and saw a beautiful lady, well, he described seeing a beautiful light lady on top of a tree, okay? This is on, on the north of Portugal, May 10th. And this was also, uh, a few days later, was published, this vision was published in the newspaper, okay? So on May 13th, 1917, so three days later, uh, Lucia Francisco Jacinto were guarding their ship when they heard thunders, uh, or what they interpret as thunders, <clears throat> and saw a beautiful lady on top of a bush, like a small tree. The lady asked him to come every 13th of May for six times, and then she would tell them who she was and the purpose of her visit. She also demanded that they would learn to read. Okay, So you have to understand that back in 1917, uh, most of the Portuguese country was underdeveloped. Um, most people uh, didn't know how to write or read. So also in that particular spot in central uh, Portugal, there were no roads, there was, there was no electricity, so no radio, and even newspapers were very difficult to get there. Okay? So this was a very rural area nothing to do unless go out with the ship, sometimes go to near villages, okay, but it was extremely poor, okay, so uh, uh, there was uh, no chance that this, uh, any news of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the spiritual messages that had been published in Porto or Lisbon would get to the ears of these children. Okay, or any other people in the village, because it wasn't. It it was not like today, where news spread by the second. This um, you have to understand. There were no electricity, no radio, newspapers. Okay, no roads. Okay? <clears throat> um, so uh, this this lady, this being, only Lucia and Jacinta, the two girls, were able to hear inside their heads, they said that uh, it spoke without moving its lips. Okay? Jacinto and uh, um, Francisco, this is wrong. Jacinto could only see her. She could not hear her, okay? There was also a buzzing sound every time the lady would speak, okay? Also, a, always a buzzing sound. They, they specifically said like, like bees, inside the jar, okay? This is Manuel Marx, the local priest who first interviewed the children. And so he did interview, he, he did had confessions from the kids every time, every, uh, in every apparition. So they would go and talk to the priest. Okay? And they, he wrote uh, the, uh, uh, the confessions, so we do have all the, the papers. And um, of course, this, this, this father uh, threatened them if they did not tell the truth, because initially, they, uh, the kids never said it was the Virgin Mary. They only said they saw uh, a beautiful feminine uh, being, they call eventually a lady, um, but they never said it was the Virgin Mary. It was a relative from Jacinta who said that if it comes from the sky, who can it be uh, unless the, uh, the mother of God, the mother of Jesus? Okay. So um, initially, uh, from the first, the first confessions, uh, the priest was very, very um, uh, skeptic and said and, and was was intrigued and thought they were kidding and well threatened them if, if this is just a joke you could not joke with something from the divine okay? and after witnessing the miracle of the sun um, is and after sending his inquiry to uh, the local bishop um, he uh, just disappeared he never agreed with all the uh, the fuzz that was created around this okay 
So the first problem, the description of the lady, Lucia never told that she saw the Virgin Mary, but just a small lady that was holding a ball of light at its chest and said the, the lady was about the, the, the same height of her cousin, about one meter and 10 centimeters, okay? Very small. <clears throat> and there you see the, the description. This was made by, this drawing was made by um, Claro Fangio, what we, he was the husband of Fina de Armada, the researcher, the only researcher that had access uh, to the, um, the, and they call the secret files of the sanctuary. This is a side story. So Fina de Armada, uh, back in the 70s, um, one, she got an idea of when she was researching this, this case, uh, she applied for a scholarship uh, for her PhD as an historian. And she wanted to do a, a thesis about the role of women in the first republic. So you know that Portugal was a monarchy from 1143 until 1910. In 1910, the king was assassinated and the, um, the republic was instituted. Okay? And um, one of the things, well, the, 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 there, there were several women uh, throughout history that had an impact on, the, on events, and specifically in, in the, uh, the, the First Republic, the first years of the Republic. One of the people was um, Maria Carreira, who was the first woman, who was the woman that um, collected funds to build the first chapel in Fatima. And so she uh, used that excuse to, um, for, for it, this was one of the personalities that she wanted to study for her, her thesis. And so she asked permission to the Fatima sanctuary to go and check the records, the files there, uh, to see if, there's, if there was anything about Maria Carreira. And so uh, it was the, 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 um, the request was, was granted. Uh, she went there, uh, stayed for, uh, a couple of hours. She was only allowed to be there for a couple of hours. And she asked specifically for several files. And she was lucky. She was lucky because um, although she was very, she could not record anything. She, there was always someone next to her watching what she was doing. She was able to um, take several notes and uh, Basically, she had, she was lucky to find several things about about Lucy. About the there was a specific file for um, unusual uh, event during the thirteenth of May during the the miracle of the sun. So what she, she was able to uh, she was lucky. So there you uh, below the uh, oh and according to the description that the kids did to the um, the local priest the husband of Fina de Armada was able to draw this, um, this, uh, this drawing of the lady, okay? Uh, if, you, if you look at it, it doesn't resemble any Christian figure right, in history, okay? completely different. Okay? Uh, also, um, this, this type of suit would be almost like an heresy back in 1917 when uh, women were not allowed, but it was not be it was not good for a woman to use such. A, uh, her dress would have to go and uh, to the ground, not above above the feet. Okay? And so you have descriptions here um, uh, with the mini skirts. Uh, this was this is from from uh, the 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 records from Fina. And so here you also have one of the messages from the, 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 the psychics that received the message and the messenger from February signed Stella Matutina, which translates into morning star, okay? Also, of course, these medium gatherings was 
highly condemned by the church. It has nothing to do with, with Christian uh, rituals, right? So uh, obviously this had to be forgotten um, and not made aware by, by, uh, for the public. <clears throat> but it's, it's, it, it, it's, a, a, it's strange. Why Stella Matutina? Right? Why Morning Star? Uh, Francisco told the priest about how he was surprised to see the ship completely frozen when the, sh the lady showed up. So this was what most, most impressed him, why the, the ship were completely frozen. And he was uh, uh, very, very um, surprised to see that. And also he said he, that he felt very tired after the meeting okay? and time just flew when they were having this, this meeting. Also, uh, they all referred that the lady would come down through a stair of light, what they interpreted as stair of light, and uh, it would go up in the same way. Like a, maybe a projection? We don't know. Uh, Jacinta even said that the lady would reach the cloud that transported the lady. Would the Virgin Mary need a transportation? Um, and uh, there were doors, the doors of heaven, that would close, almost hitting the lady's feet. So it would close and almost hitting the lady's feet. Okay? This is the description from Jacinta. Because the word of mouth, uh, right from, from the first, the first sighting was in May, the first apparition was in May, but in June, there were already a few people uh, with, with the, 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 the children because there were the, was the word of mouth from relatives uh, spread. And immediately there were some people there also trying to witness the Virgin Mary. Okay? And so, and this number of people grew by the month. So until the 50,000 in, in October. Okay? Every month, more and more people attended. And those people, although did not see, never, the Virgin Mary, they saw the other uh, phenomena. Okay? They also heard the buzzing sound. They saw more or less what they called the stare of light. They, they saw globes of light, um, strange uh, clouds. Okay. Also, yes, exactly. Other witnesses said there was some kind of luminous cone that involved the kids with an estimate of three meters at its base. So this is after um, when the research was done by the uh, by Fina de Armada and Joaquin Fernandes, they were able to uh, not only because they they uh, Fina had had read the files of sanct the sanctuary, they, they also read files from the National Archives back in Lisbon, and they were able to identify almost 100 witnesses that were still alive, and they talked to them. So this is based on the interviews they performed to the witnesses, okay? Also, the bush, the small tree, looked like damage. So it looked like um, the, 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 the leaves were, were damaged, like something was on top including uh, some of them were, um, how can you say, um, were bent and uh, similar to something that had, um, uh, how can I say, uh, suck by air, okay? Uh, in August 13th, uh, the, children, the, the children were taken by the local priest to another location, uh, but because the, 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 the bishop, the local bishop, was very worried about the amount of people that were gathering there, and this was uh, very uncomfortable for the church. Okay? The church uh, felt that they were losing control of, of the situation, okay? and so, and they they thought that the, the, the children were, were, were frauds. So they took the, the, the children to another place uh, where they were 
arrest, more or, more or less arrested and interrogated. Um, but still, the, the witnesses that gathered there at the location, they witnessed the thunders, they witnessed strange phenomena. So it happened while the kids were not there. Okay. Uh, the, the, what I wrote here, uh, the thunder, strange noises, lights in the sky, everything happened the same way. The, the kids returned to the spot on August 19th and they had an apparition okay, on the 19th. There was a change in the phenomena from May to August and to, from August to October in the sense that um, it seemed, according to the research, that um, um, after, after the kids didn't show up on the 13th of August, in September, there were phenomena um, that manifested like trying to confirm that the kids were indeed there. Okay? It's difficult to explain, but something like this, uh, this is an interpretation from, from uh, the several witness reports that were gathered. Okay? So August, September, and October, witnesses report seeing very strange objects that were not seen, seen before. Luminous oval-shaped objects, globes spinning in the clouds with several colors, people describing flying hats, flying crosses. Of course, you have to understand also that in, in 1917, there were no planes in Portugal, of course. So 90% of the people never saw, had seen an airplane. So flying hats, what does a flying hat look like? Okay. Things that people were amazed and could not explain. October 13th, more than 50,000 people attended, expecting to witness what they believed would be a, a revelation or a miracle. Uh, it had been raining all night and morning. People were completely wet. The, the ground was wet. And at 12 p.m., according to one report of, of the newspaper, Useklu, the sand danced. Okay. These are uh, pictures from, from the time. Of course, it could not be the sun, or everyone on earth would see the sun dancing, right? Not to mention all the consequences for the entire solar system if the sun would have moved. Right? This is a, a scale of the size of earth, the size of the sun. So witness testimony, José Pereira, Pereira Jange, which is a medical doctor, he was there and he said it was a strange sun, flat with a well-defined boundary that looked like a dull silver disc. Hmm? Uh, a lawyer also, this is a, a very well-known lawyer in Portugal at the time, it started turning sharply on itself. Its edges became scarlet and slid like a whirlwind, spreading flames of fire. So it had several lights on its boundaries. Gushing cascade of green lights, red, blue, violet in various shades, which were reflected in the soil, trees, bushes, and cloud and the clothes. So it there were not only people that were uneducated, there were people like lawyers, medical, even priests that describe dull silvery discs, right? <laughs> It was not the sun, of course. So these are drawings from not only Fengi, Claro Fengi, the, the, the husband of, of Fina de Armada, but José Sotomayor, uh, a researcher from CTEC. Uh, this is according to the description of the witnesses. So something came from behind the clouds and started spinning and made two, um, it, it passed by through, through the, the people's heads at least two times, okay? Uh, again, this is on the right, according to the several witnesses that were identified through the uh, National Archives files. Uh, these were um, where um, intense heat, uh, the drying of clothes and soil, 
physiological effects were uh, felt on this path of the object where where the where the object path there were um, uh, feelings of heat um, uh, dryness of clothes and, and soil uh, some um, healings also occurred um, it was but you have to also understand that people that were uh, further from from the spot where the object came some people reported not seeing anything of uh, extraordinary okay so only the people in this path uh, really saw something extraordinary okay also you have reports of uh, the shattering of um, of windshields um, sudden combustion of uh, uh, of gasoline uh, so this was very, very, the, the very few cars that were there, of course, uh, very impactful for, for many people. Okay. It had been raining. Several people reported their clothes dry, the soil below them as well. The few cars that were there, reports of mechanical, mechanical failures, windshields that were sudden shattered, sudden combustion of gasoline, hoods of cars ripped out, ripped off, maybe. Healings and skin burns are also reported. Many witnesses saying it was a marvelous but very frightening event. And people again heard the buzzing sounds and saw a rain of small flowers. Well, maybe angel hair. This man, Professor Jose Barbosa Machado, a colleague from uh, University Tras Montes, um, a good friend, also a member of CTEC, he um, for for uh, coincidence, he was uh, with a, a colleague uh, at at the um, um, at the sanctuary. Uh, they were um, doing uh, also research of for um, old photographs uh, from not related to the to the, the, the Fatima case to other to other uh, situations because this is Joshua Baloniel. He was the leading photographer at the time. He also did, um, he was the, 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 the main photographer for the royal family back then. And um, <clears throat> for, many, for many years, uh, he was there during the event, during 13th of October. He took pictures uh, of the, uh, uh, this is the, and you see on the, on the, on the right, the, the, the three kids, uh, on this was the first monument, <laughs> um, uh, basic monument where the local site of the operation okay? <clears throat> uh, made by the locals, of course, made by the locals. And so uh, Joshua Bolognial was there and he took a set of pictures. So th they, they, when they, they understood that, the, that this reporter was in, in 1917, in, in October, uh, he was there. They realized he must have, where are the photographs? Okay. And so they, 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 they spent a few days there trying to understand where the photographs were. And they were almost um, quitting the job <laughs> when they found um, a case, a hidden case, with different, remember that back then the photographs were taken, the, these were glass plates. Taking a photograph would take a lot of time. Okay? So you have to set the machine, you have to open to the lights for the light to enter, wait, 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 and then take the picture. So during these several seconds, many things would happen. It's not, it's, it is not like today, we just press and it's the, the photograph is taken. Back then it was very, very, um, it needed time. Uh, still, there were a set of glass plates from the time that Joshua Bolognial uh, had taken and they were stored uh, in, a low, in a hidden case. So these are the, um, the, um, some of the photographs. Okay, you see here, so in the in the um, in the photographs, you can see here something, right? This, this, and then here there's a shadow. 
a round shaped object. So you see that here, <clears throat> something took off under this. These are all the people here gathered. And this is more or less the spot of the, uh, the operation, more or less here. Okay? So the negative shows the, exactly the same thing. Okay? This, or this was analyzed by several experts into photography. This is not um, uh, stains in the glass. These are something is there. Okay. Um, same thing here. So here you see, here you see the object. Here, there is another anomaly there. This is obviously, uh, uh, this was done after just to make sure that th th this, there was a mark there and people are indeed looking this way. Same thing here. There's something there. This is not the stain in the glass. Something is there. You see the, uh, the light coming down and you see people staring, see this guy staring at like this, okay? Something is there. There's another witness, the fourth seer uh, that was um, found by um, Fina de Armada when she was looking at the, uh, the sanctuary files. There's a mentioning to Carolina Carreira. Remember that I spoke about Maria Carreira, the woman that gathered funds to build the first chapel? This woman, Maria Carreira, was the mother of this Carolina Carreira. Carolina Carreira uh, was a friend of Lucia. He, she uh, saw um, on, on the 20th of July, 1917, she was with a, a cousin with, uh, with some ship. Uh, this ship belonged to a, a friend of the family, um, a very rude man. Uh, they had much respect for this man. They were taking care of the ship when Carolina Carreira uh, said that she started hearing someone crying and laughing at the same time and singing. There was a combination of crying, singing, um, laughing. She turned her head and she saw, she described seeing a blonde, um, she could not say if it was a boy or a girl, just a blonde child um, that was there. She could not explain, it was strange. And um, her cousin uh, just saw, again, the sheep were paralyzed and they were very afraid of the, what happened to the sheep because the sheep were belonged to this rude man that, which they had much respect. So they were worried about the sheep being paralyzed, completely paralyzed. And they also was, they were witnessing this strange child blondish that um, immediately when she turned her head again, it was on top of the bush and asking them to come and pray, come and pray. But they were so frightened about what was happening that they just ran away. Okay? Um, somehow Carolina also told this to Lucia and this was this, this, the report of witness uh, was also mentioned in the, um, the local uh, files from the bishop okay, that Fina de Armada witnessed. And Fina de Armada was able to interview Carolina Carreira uh, back in the 70s, which she was very old back then. Uh, but this is the fourth seer is something that no one knows, basically. And um, also she was not disgraced by that also because you know, the, the three children, the three um, uh, originals, Lucia was sent to the a monastery, Jesuit monastery in Spain. She made a vow of silence. She could not speak with, with anyone uh, since a young age. So she lost her, uh, all her childhoods and she, she, she had a, we know that she had a terrible experience in the, the monastery in Spain. <clears throat> so she had a, she went through a, a local a, a personal nightmare and her cousins died of young age with pneumonia as well. 
um, so she was spared of of uh, of um, great great pain. We know that Gilberto dos Santos, a businessman from Torres Novas near Lisbon, <clears throat> paid for the production of an image, <clears throat> the Holy Mary, which was presented, inaugurated in 1920. And he also sung the song uh, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. So this was the man who composed the song. He composed also the... Um, <clears throat> the image of the Virgin Mary, which was copied from another image of Lady of Lapa. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is um, um, even described in, in local books of uh, sacred art. Okay? This is acknowledged. Uh, when the, this image was shown to Lucia, she said, specifically that it, it didn't resemble the lady that she had seen in any way. But by then the public had already adopted. So the public also uh, made a huge uh, impact on the adoration of the Virgin Mary. So it was the local, the locals and the population that pressed the uh, entire church that it needed to adopt <coughs> some kind of recognition of what happened because in the in the beginning the church didn't want to have nothing with it okay it was so it was not the church that hid the situation it was the people that made pressure to for the church to take action and to recognize it as something uh, that it was indeed the Virgin Mary, including the uh, the, um, the 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 bishop in in um, uh, the patriarch of, of Lisbon in the fifties said Fatima was made by the people, not by the church. Okay? So, but they had to take take action, or they would lose control. Okay? Years after apparitions. Um, Healings were still being reported. We imagine that the, maybe the, uh, the, the amount of, uh, of, um, of um, radioactivity in, in, in that place where the, 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 the object came, there were something happened there that uh, allowed for the soil to have some kind of properties, healing properties. Okay? There are several cases about the use of portions of land from the spot where the lady would show up and people recording, recovering from severe illnesses. And the ball of light was later became interpreted and became the heart of Mary. So this is the, the, the Fatima sanctuary nowadays. Okay? Uh, you, you see here every uh, 13th of May and on the night of, 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 of the 12th also, <clears throat> you see all the gatherings. On the night of the 12th is when the, the, the image of the Virgin Mary leaves. The, and <clears throat> so let me show you. <clears throat> Usually the image of the Virgin Mary is here in this chapel. This chapel is where the apparitions took place. Okay, So on the night of the 12th, the... Um, the image lives here and makes um, uh, people carrying it okay, from, from here to here to the, the major um, church. Okay? And on, on, on the day of the 13th, it lives here and comes right back to the, uh, to the um, this Here inside, there's a very small chapel, the chapel built with the funds collected by Maria Carreira. Okay. On the 13th of May of 2017, when the Pope came here, this was the, 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 the century anniversary of the operations, above 1 million people attended the ceremonies. Okay. So it has big, big impact. It was completely full. And um, this here is Fina di Armada. This is a, a gathering that we did to homage uh, Fina for because 
when she came public with her findings, of course, her scholarship was terminated. Um, she was never able to uh, conclude her thesis. Uh, she suffered a lot in terms of her academic uh, life. <clears throat> Joaquin Fernandes, not that much, maybe because he's a man, maybe. Uh, but but uh, uh, in this in this when we had this this small homage to 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 Fina, she was already very ill uh, with cancer. Uh, Joaquin Fernandes was not able to be present there because he was ill as well. <clears throat> These are all um, colleagues and friends from from CTEC, um, astrophysicists, anthropologists, historians, uh, geographers, etc. Um, and um, uh, yeah, uh, six months later, Fina, Fina died after this this gathering. We uh, we did we did a series for the History Channel about Fatima. They specifically wanted to to, to do about the apparitions, and um, we spent a full day uh, with Fina um, filming. And this was extraterrestrials. One of the uh, uh, one of the, the episodes for this series was about only about Fatima. And this, this series always um, premiered a new uh, episode on Sundays at uh, prime time. On Friday, I received a call from, from the production saying that the episode about Fatima will not air. Someone inside the, uh, the, the board of directors of the uh, of the History Channel in, 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 in the Iberian Peninsula um, said, we don't uh, need to hurt the religious feelings of the public, so we will not air the episode. And Fina was obviously devastated, of course. Uh, thank you for, for your time. Thanks, Francisco. That's so interesting. Um, you all fell asleep. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. That's. I was very interested to get some extra information. Um, hmm. You know that behind the scenes sort of stuff. Were there more details on what kind of strange, strange lights they saw in the sky? Well, strange, strange lights in the sense of balls of lights, usually orbs. Some would would be interpreted as orbs or round shape uh, lights. And there was lightning too, wasn't there? The, in the clouds and things like that. Um, well, they they refer only only uh, fenders. Oh, okay. They heard the fenders. Well, that was what the, the interpretation of the of the of one reporter that um, <clears throat> well they could not describe. The, it was so strange what they were witnessing. They saw a round shaped object coming from uh, uh, behind the clouds. And it's just spinned and went over the people's heads and it spinned twice. So it was a dancing sun. That was their interpretation. In the, the, the first uh, confessions from the kids to the local priests, they never talk about any message. They talk about, uh, Lucia speaks about um, something, a few words, a few words that are being told. Uh, but no mention to secrets. So the secrets only um, appear back in 36, the first time when Lucia, um, after coming from, from the, um, the monastery, the Jesuit monastery in, in Spain, that's when I think it's the first memories of Lucia. That's when there's mention to secrets. Uh, but until then, no mention at all. No. So. Uh, some researchers, including Fina and, and Joaquin, uh, think that uh, the secrets, it's, it's a made up story. The, the apparitions started on May 13th and lasted until October. So there were six apparitions every 13th of the, May, of the, of the month, um, minus August, when uh, in August they were um, they were arrested by the priests and taken to another location. Uh, still, the people that had gathered there, hoping to see something, they saw indeed 
they witnessed a strange phenomena um, and, the sh and the kids later came back to the same spot on the 19th and they had the apparition. So there's a total of six apparitions every time with more people attending the place. What Lucia refers to is um, they would have to learn to read basics of knowledge, right? Yes. And uh, in the end, they, she would tell them who she was and why she came. Uh, it, it um, and uh, basically just, they just felt good uh, being in the presence of her. What do you think of Michael Hesseman's The Fatima Secret? Well, uh, it's a, his interpretation. <laughs> Sometimes people get, get um, um, because the secrets is something that sells a lot, right? And, and uh, we believe that, the, again, it's, it's um, even the patriarch said Fatima was made by the public. Uh, it's, uh, their beliefs. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, we don't have certainty of anything unless what is what was reported by the witnesses. Mm. What do I feel that the entity was? I don't know. Mm. Uh, maybe what it was a, just a projection. Uh, maybe they came and saw that we're, we were in such a primitive state, they, they, they just gave up and went away. <laughs> we, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but, you, you know, you said, um, would the lady need transportation if she was really Mary? And then, uh, divine. If, they were, if, she, if she was divine, why would she need a transportation? Yeah, so, so that sort of they, indicates that, well, she was probably physical. Well, at least something, uh, there are other witnesses reporting, oh, there goes the, uh, the transportation, the car that transports the lady. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the photographs, I mean, these are just pieces of evidence. We cannot say for 100% sure mm. that what we are seeing is what we are seeing. These are pieces of evidence that something indeed happened there yeah and uh, it's our belief that it's it was nothing to with the divine but something extraordinary uh, manifesting from other realities mm. one, of the sure. th one of the things i found fascinating about the case was um that um the children, I mean, I saw an old piece of footage of them taken and um, it was of the three of them walking with their heads right back so that, you know, they're, they're, they're um, as far back as they could possibly go and uh, then looking straight up vertically at the sky and then seemed to be marching in unison. So they're definitely in an altered state of consciousness. I don't know if you've oh, seen yes, that footage. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. No, I have not, but yes, they no, were. They, they, this was clearly uh, when they were having their visions, yep. um, they were in an altered state of mind. Yes, yes. of and consciousness. Their, yes. Their bodies yes. Were, were responding in that way. And also um, when they are in those phases, that there were uh, people who were testing them. They were sticking pins in them and they weren't responding at all, you know, and then they would kneel for ages on this hard gravel and it didn't seem to bother the children at all. Um, all those types of things, it's, you know, it's it's fascinating what was going on with those kids. Yeah. Oh, and, the, well, yeah. and, and it transformed their lives for, for the worst. Yeah. The other thing I just remembered yeah. was when they were kneeling down, um, uh, adult men would try and pick them up, but they were so heavy that they couldn't pick them up. It was like the gravitation had changed around the children too. Uh, where did you see that? Because that, there was, that no... was in that was in heavenly lights. Are you aware of devout Catholic changing their minds belief? I, I think we should not mm, mix uh, faith with. Uh, what happened. If you go to Fatima, you feel a different energy for sure. Okay. And, and um, for one thing, there's, there's, there's um, a positive message in all of this, which is love. 
right? You have uh, get, gather all of humanity uh, and pray for love. And that you feel in Fatima. So in that sense, uh, the ultimate result was good. If you go to Fatima, you indeed feel a different energy. You feel peace. Um, it's, it's different. So something is indeed there. Uh, that's, uh, maybe that's the, the ultimate. I mean, through, like someone said, through meditation, uh, having uh, our consciousness connect to, uh, to the roots uh, and love may flow uh, for everyone. The thing is that there's, if you go throughout history, there's plenty of other similar apparitions. Even in Portugal, mm. there's more than 50 similar apparitions with objects in different locations. Okay? But only Fatima um, had this impact to the, to the point where the church needs to intervene and, to intervene and uh, take over it. So, uh, but there are other. I mean, we, we, when we filmed for other documentaries, we went through from north to south. Um, and some of them, uh, the local churches, still Catholic, perform their devotions to that specific apparition, but it doesn't have the dimension of Fatima. It's much, much smaller, but still with the same characteristics. And across the globe, you see many similar. So we don't know if what type of entity is this. Is an entity that is here on planet Earth and sometimes likes to play with us? Or uh, we don't know. Besides all the merchandise, if you go to Fatima, there's plenty and plenty of stores with memorabilia and, and, and images to sell it. There's a big commerce around Fatima, of course. Mm. But if you enter the, um, the, the recent, the, 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 the place of the, uh, the, um, um, the sanctuary, it's completely different. The, 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 the vibration changes completely because everyone is silent. Okay. Everyone is silent and you feel peace, you feel good. It's different. Mm. In that way, it's different. Uh, and in there too, you said that the woman wanted uh, the children to come and pray. I'm just wondering if there's some sort of connection there with when they're in a prayerful state, are they more easily accessed at a different level or could they be? Um, do you think there's something, some connection there? There are two interpretations. One, you can relate to meditation, learn how to meditate, okay? And, and then um, get access to different states of consciousness, yes. But there's another more sinister um, uh, interpretation or theory that some entities feed from this um, when people are praying all at the same time, and this they, they the the Russians made this 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 experiment, which is measuring the the energy that is released when people gather to pray. Okay? And so there are some theories that say or defend that there may be some entities that feed from this energy that is released from people praying. Right? And yeah. so that's why religious, religions are so um, incentive. Uh, there's an, in, an incentive for, for, for the religion aspects. You, you, in, in all religions, you need a, a state where you are praying, 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 right? And mm -hmm. people gather to pray. And so lots of energy are re is released and these entities feed. And so they like enslave us mm -hmm. to be religious people praying because they need to. Uh, there are a couple of, of uh, researchers that are very... Um, keen to this theory. Mm. What are your thoughts on it? I think it's a valid point. Mm. Yeah. And we it's it's one of the theories that 
uh, we are trying to get in in uh, in CTEC, uh, is trying to get some funding precisely to replicate this this um, so in 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 gatherings of praying trying to measure the amount of energy that is indeed released and compare it to other situations it will not obviously um, be an evidence that there are entities feeding from it of course but 